Dear students, I'm Dr. Nusrat Gul from Women's College, Amirud Srinagar, and today we will be discussing stern volmer equation. The basic concept that we discuss in this equation is quenching. Quenching a process that leads to a reduction in fluorescence intensity is referred to as quenching. Quenching may occur due to energy transfer, charge transfer reactions, or due to the formation of complexes in the ground state. So, whenever there is reduction in the fluorescence intensity, or we can say the fluorescence intensity is quenched or reduced due to the presence of a certain species, we call this process quenching and the species is referred to as quencher. Quenching may be classified as collisional quenching or it may be classified as static or the quenching that occurs due to complex formation. Collisional quenching occurs when the excited fluorophore or the excited molecule experiences contact with an atom or a molecule that can facilitate non-radiative transitions to the ground state, meaning thereby normally when a molecule comes to the ground state, it fluoresces. Ye radiation lose karta hai when ye ground state mein aata hai aur hum kehte hain ki fluorescence ho gayi. But sometimes what happens, ye jo excited fluorophore hai, ye kisi molecule se collide karta hai aur ye fluorescence se pehle, ground state mein aane se pehle kuch energy lose karta hai lekin us energy ko lose karte time ye koi radiations bahar nahi deta hai aur inko hum kehte hain non radiative transitions uh, i will be explaining it uh, with a with with a diagram ye main aapko samjha dungi ye non radiative or radiative transitions ka farak uh, as we go ahead with this lecture to kuch quenchers jinke sath the excited fluorophore when it collides the quenching results, these are oxygen, this is iodide ion, cesium and acrylamide. Again, as discussed, excited state molecule returns to the ground state either through the emission of a photon or it collides to the quencher molecule and returns to the ground state non-radiatively, that is, without emitting any radiation. The other routes, there are some other routes, through which the molecule may relax non-radiatively are internal conversion or inter-system crossover. This we shall discuss as we go ahead. So, stern volmer plot. This plot basically, it is based on an equation where we plot this phi naught by phi on one axis and this quencher concentration on the other axis. Now the question arises, what is phi naught kya hai or ye phi kya hai? This phi naught is the quantum yield in the absence of quencher and this phi is the quantum yield in the presence of the quencher. Quencher, I may repeat, is a substance with which an excited molecule, excited fluorophore collides and loses some energy non-radiatively. This quencher or this process of quenching results in the decrease in the fluorescence intensity. Right? So, we will be discussing about this phi zero, how to find this out and how to find out this phi and then we will have the ratio and derive this stern volmer plot. This phi zero as discussed quantum yield in the absence of quencher, phi is the quantum yield in the presence of quencher and this Ksv, this is the Stern-Volmer constant. 
this is the plot phi 0 by phi plot it against Quenchel concentration and we get a straight line where the slope is the stern wall or constant and the intercept on this y-axis is 1 as we have already seen in the equation and we will uh, just uh, understand it as the lecture proceeds. Stern Volmer plot for fluorescein quenched by iodide ion. This particular plot is fluorescein which is our fluorophoric excited molecule. When it is quenched with iodide ion, the plot that we get is this. This is the plot that we get. So, for deriving the Stern Volmer equation, what we will do, we will consider a molecule M. It will absorb some energy and will be excited to some excited state. Let us say it is excited to M star. The excited molecule may return to the ground state through a number of routes. And these routes will be both radiative and not radiative. So the excited state will go to the ground state by losing energy. And during this energy loss, some radiations may be emitted and some energy lo loss may take place without the emission of any radiations and we call that non-radiative processes. So the first step will be the molecule will absorb some energy and will be excited to M star. And here it is worth noticing that this ground state molecule, it goes from singlet state to singlet state. So uh, here it is imperative to understand a little bit about the singlet and the triplet state. In case of singlet state, we have got paired electrons, right? And in singlet, in this case, the spin quantum number, value of spin quantum number is zero. And there is a single spectral line. A key spectral line we get in this. Okay? But in case of triplet state, we have got two unpaired electrons. These are two unpaired electrons. And the value of spin quantum number that is equal to 1. And the spectral line. This is three-fold division. So we get three spectral lines is mehme milti hai compared to singular state jaha pe we will get one this spectral line now the second step will be so humne dekha ki in the ground uh, state the molecule absorbs some energy like radiation photon absorb karte hai and it goes to the excited state by the absorption this will be the rate then this Excited molecule, it may lose a photon or a radiation, something, some radiation will be emitted and it will come again back to the ground singular state. We call this fluorescence and the rate will be Kf. This will be uh, again the excited molecule in the singular state. Is key concentration ke barabar hai ye. So, this will be the one way, one route by which the molecule will come back to the ground state. And this is the radiator route. In this process, the molecule while coming back to the ground state, it loses some energy in the form of a radiation as is represented by H nu here. Now, this excited state may lose some energy non-radiatively, but in this case, it will go from singlet state to the singlet state. We call this as internal conversion rate in case of this process will be uh, given by this expression. One more way or the non-radiative process, one more non-radiative process, while the molecule will come, uh, it, it will go from this uh, singlet state to the triplet state. It will go from, rather it will go from excited singlet state only it will go from excited single state to excited triplet state, right? Let me make a little bit of correction here. So, it will go from the excited single state to the excited 
triplet state by a process that is called as intersystem crossover. That is, it will go from the molecule will go from this state to this state. Some energy will be lost. It will be again a non radiative transition. No light will be emitted, no radiation will be emitted in this case. And the rate will be given by this expression. We will have to remember them very well, rather understand them, so that we can derive stern wormwood equation in a lucid and in an easy way. In this case, I am not mentioning something we call as a quencher. If, because I am taking up without quencher, because if, if we have got a quencher molecule, in this case, again, this excited molecule will collide with the quencher molecule and will lose some energy non radiatively But the first step we'll be doing, we will be just taking it up the taking up the quantum yield without quenching. So here, MS is the ground singlet state. This is the excited singlet state. This is the excited triplet state. See, the molecule in the ground state, it absorbs some energy. It goes to the excited state. If we have a quencher molecule, it will collide with the, the excited molecule will collide with the, this quencher molecule and will lose some energy non radiatively Now, a molecule may go from one single state, the higher single state, that is S2 to the lower single state by internal conversion. Here, the molecule will be in the single state. In S2, in S1 also, it will be in the single state. But sometimes what happens? the molecule may go from the singlet state to the triplet state. And this crossing over of the system from singlet to triplet, we call it inter-system crossover. Here also the energy is lost non-radiatively. And when coming back to the ground state from this state, the molecule will lose energy in the form of radiation. And this is what we call as fluorescence. Now, as we know, in order to derive this stern wolmer equation, we need to find out phi zero, that is the quantum yield in the absence of quencher, and phi, that is the quantum yield in the presence of quencher. We will be taking up this quantum yield in the absence of quencher first. That will be equal to number of photons emitted as fluorescence, divided by the total number of photons absorbed. So when the photons are absorbed, the molecule goes to the excited state. While coming back, many deactivation processes will take place. Among the deactivation processes, one of the deactivation processes will be fluorescence, while the molecule uh, will uh, emit the photons. But other than that, it will lose some energy, not by the emission of photons, but non-radiatively in the form of this internal conversion and inter-system crossing over. Since we don't have any quencher here, so uh, that we are not supposed to consider here. So the total number of photons absorbed will lead to all the deactivation processes, whether that is fluorescence, or internal conversion or inter-system crossover. So this total number of photons, it will be equal to the sum total of all the deactivation processes. That's what uh, I have written here. It is total number of photons absorbed is equal to the sum total of deactivation processes. So what we'll be writing down will be, this phi zero will be equal to number of photons emitted as fluorescence divided by rate of all deactivation processes. And we are well aware that in this case, in the absence of quencher, the deactivation processes will include fluorescence, internal conversion, and inter-system crossover, right? So this will be the rate uh, for the fluorescence. This is, again, for fluorescence, because deactivation process will include fluorescence as well. This will be for internal conversion and this will be for inter-system crossover. We'll be taking this M common in the denominator. This M will be taken as common. So this M and this M goes. So what will be left 
out with it will be phi naught will be equal to kf divided by kf plus kic plus kic but we know that this internal conversion and inter-system crossover these are non-radiative transitions so that's why we write k and r is k and r is equal to kic plus kic so in this case we will write kf divided by k plus k and r okay that's what we have written so k is the rate of all deactivation processes this is, will be the fluorescence lifetime and it will be inversely proportional to the rate of deactivation of all the processes right so this k is equal to uh, kf rate of deactivation of all the processes including the radiative as well as the non-radiative processes kf Fluorescence, that is the radiative transition, and KNR, that is the non-radiative transition. So, we will just try to find out how we can relate this fluorescence lifetime with this phi naught or the quantum yield in the absence of the quantum. We will multiply and divide by this uh, right-hand side, that is 1 divided by K plus KNR by K. If we multiply and divide by K, that will be KF divided by K that will uh, come out to be 1 and won't uh, just influence this equation. So what we'll do, we will first multiply it by Kf. So Kf, 1 into Kf, that will be Kf, divided by Kf plus Knr into, now we have to divide it by Kf, that means 1 divided by Kf. So what will happen? This Kf divided by Kf plus Knr is equal to 5, not so tau zero will be equal to phi naught divided by kf right so this is how we relate fluorescence lifetime and this quantum yield there in the absence of the quencher and the rate constant in case of fluorescence we re relate these three quantities and in case uh, in case of numericals if we know any of the two values we can find out the third value now Kf and Knr are the fluorescence rate constants and non-radiative non rate constants respectively. So we are done with phi naught. We will just try to find out phi. Quantum yield of fluorescence in the presence of quencher. Phi. It is equal to, again, the number of photons emitted as fluorescence divided by rate of all deactivation processes. But in this case, we have quencher as well. So Ek deactivation process hamari. So we will have to include this quencher as well. That's why we write down here. This will be Kf. This is in the case of rate in case of the fluorescence. This will be in case of fluorescence, internal conversion, inter-system crossover, and this will be this rate will be due to the presence of the quencher. This is the concentration of quencher that is. Q and this is the rate constant. So again, we'll take this M as constant, common rather in the denominator, and phi will be equal to Kf divided by Kf plus Kic plus Kisc plus Kq. But one thing we have to keep in mind, we have to keep these Ks as small. Okay. We derive stern Warmer constants constant equation by dividing the value of quantum yield. As I earlier said, we will divide the value of quantum yield in the absence of the quencher to that in the presence of quencher. Since we have found out both the values in the absence of quencher and in the presence of the quencher, we will simply place those values in the equation. First, in the absence of quencher, it will be Kf divided by Kf plus Kic plus Kic. No quencher here. In this case, we have to include quencher. It will be Kf divided by Kic plus Kic plus Kqq, right? So this here we include the quencher. Now we will write the numerator and multiply it with the reciprocal of the denominator. That's what I have done here. This Kf and Kf goes and we are left with this. 
So what we'll do? We have just uh, split this equation. Kf plus Kic plus Kic divided by this plus Kqq divided by this. This and this goes. Ye one ban jayega. So the final equation will be Kf 1 plus this portion. In the next so instead of this uh, we write down kq and q we have write it as such and this tau zero instead of one by kf plus kic plus kic we know that it's equal to the fluorescence lifetime and we write it like this so we instead of one divided by kf plus kic plus kic we write down this tau zero this will be our, this is our stern volmer equation right this is our stern volmer equation and if you just pay little attention you can see it's in the form y is equal to m x plus c this this we take as y and this is equal to m x and this is our c right so if we plot a graph see if we plot a graph against this and this x that is on one axis we plot phi 0 by phi and on the other axis we plot q what we will find out we will get a straight line with an intercept on the y axis equal to 1 and this k q t 0 we also call it as the stern warmer constant this will be the slope that's what I have written here. So, we plot this phi 0 by phi against this q. We get a straight line and this intercept is equal to 1. This intercept is equal to 1. And the slope will be equal to k q t 0. This slope will be equal to k q t 0. This is what I have written down instead of this kq t0 we can write down ksv or the stern volmer constant uh, this is our quantum yield in the absence of quencher this is our quantum yield in the presence of quencher this is our quenching constant and this is our lifetime in the absence of quencher right so this and this case we this will be our stern volmer constant this q is the concentration of the quencher thank you so much hope uh, you have understood the derivation and the significance of this stern volmer plot thanks